<laughs> Can you imagine anybody following those old customs today? Yes. Who? Father. And it's no laughing matter to him. Celia wore green stockings when Evelyn was married. Figuratively, of course. And I know he'll never let me marry you until Celia is. Phyllis, my dear, the old girl may never get married. Bobby. You must take father apart and talk to him. I'm afraid I wouldn't have to take him apart. He goes all to pieces whenever he sees me. Oh, Bobby. This coffee tastes like nothing on earth. Quite so, sir. We've run out of the special kind Miss Celia always gets for you. Oh, it does seem, Father, that if Celia must go away, she might at least attend to things before she leaves. Can't anyone in this house attend to things except your sister Celia? When is the dear old thing coming back? Begging your pardon, sir, yeah. but I believe Miss Celia wired Lady Trenchard that she was returning this evening. Oh, so she did, and I completely forgot it. Oh, but I have so much on my mind. Uh, perhaps I'd better go to the station and meet Celia. No, 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 no. You play bridge, Raleigh. But who will meet her? She'll manage very well. Well, I can't go. I must write to my husband tonight. <sighs> yeah, I, even you can play that hand without my assistance, Raleigh. Go ahead now, Bobby. He's dummy. And in a good humor. <clears throat> As I was saying, sir, I love your daughter and I can't live without her. Uh, well, why tell me about it? I'm not an undertaker. Uh, no, sir. But I do want to marry her. Look here, young man. Has it ever occurred to you that I have an unmarried daughter older than Phyllis? Oh, but, sir... Oh, Bobby, Bobby! I'm afraid it's hopeless. Although I spoke with extraordinary force. Of course it's hopeless, as long as Celia is. And, and if we can't be married until Celia is, well... Oh, oh, Bobby, can't you think of anyone who might marry Celia? Well, there's, uh... I've got an idea. Why shouldn't Raleigh be got to marry Celia? Oh, Bobby. Well, it's not half bad. She might do worse, you know. Oh, Bobby, you must make him. Just you wait till he's dummy. I'll make him. Come on. Imbecile. How anyone could have lost with that hand. 
but sir, if you were I, what would you have done? Yeah, kill myself. Rally, old boy, you've got to marry Celia. What? Marry? Oh, I say, I say. Certainly you ought. Every man ought. It's his duty to, uh, uh, well, to his country. Certainly. Uh, but I say, uh, don't be absurd, dear boy. I'm not absurd. I'm serious. Very. Oh, but I can't. I don't... Uh, Do you mean uh, to say you don't love her? Well, uh, not exactly. Then why have you been coming here month after month? I don't know. I, uh... Oh, I see. Do you know I, I... I know. You're in love with Celia, and you never knew it. What ho! Isn't that most extraordinary? I believe I've been in love with her for ages and didn't know enough to know it. Then you then will. Then you will? Well, uh, I'll... I'll sound her out on the subject. Rally! Rally! Oh, excuse me. Uh, now, you've now, got now, to don't forget. Rally, don't you? you won't forget, will you? I simply must write to my hubby. The last post for the Indian mail leaves at ten, you know. Great Scott! It's hopeless to attempt to play bridge in this house without your sister, Celia. It'd be all right if father wasn't so silly. I think you're perfectly horrid, Father. Why? Uh, oh, uh, because I won't let you marry this, uh, uh, this, uh... <laughs> oh, come now, my darling. You are too young to be married. I couldn't think of losing you, my ducky. <laughs> Utter rot, uh, Father. There's nothing would please you more. What? Oh, I say, now, look here. You know that I... Uh... Just couldn't bear to see Celia wear green stockings again. <laughs> Oh, oh, my soul and body. Oh. Celia, dear. Hello. Hello, Celia. Hello, 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 Hello Anne. Oh, darling. I, I say, she must have walked. Well, you seem to have hit on a clue. Oh, Celia, dear, we forgot to send for you. I thought you would and didn't wait. Hiya, Rally. Toppy, old girl. <laughs> oh, I say, in that outfit you look almost like a man. <laughs> yes. And with that mustache, so do you. Almost. <laughs> oh, that's very good. <laughs> <laughs> Bless my soul and body, Celia. Father. My darling, where have you been? I've been spending the week at Southampton. You knew that, Father, didn't you? Or hadn't you noticed it? Oh, yes, among all the ships and soldiers and things. Oh, yes, of course, darling. I, I, I have missed you terribly. Yes, I, I don't get the, quite the right things to eat when you're away. Oh, sorry, Father. Yes. Yeah, now then, you two, none of that. You are not engaged yet, you know. Engaged? Phyllis and Bobby? Oh, nonsense, nonsense. Nothing of the kind. You don't suppose I would allow a chick like Phyllis to marry before her older sister? William. Yeah, well, now we can get back to the game. You, you, c come, Ida. Uh, come, Raleigh. It's all right. Oh, Celia, you don't really mind, do you? Just because you don't want to get married, you won't try to stop Bobby and me, will you? Phyllis, dear, you know there isn't anything I wouldn't do to make you happy. Oh, I knew you'd understand. I told Bobby you would. Just what are you two driving at? Well, you I mean... see, Father won't let Bobby and me get married until you do. And we have a plan. Bobby and I have arranged with Raleigh to propose to you. What? Oh, oh, I suppose I oughtn't to have told you. But it's true just the same. 
But he loves you. He just told me so a few minutes ago. Absurd. I couldn't think of marrying him. Oh, Bobby, that ruins everything for us. We can never be married now. Celia insists on being an old maid. And I, I guess I'll have to be one, too. <laughs> now, please. But I can't help it, well, Bobby. Darling. Now, stop it, will you? <laughs> well, Bobby, what are we going to do? Phyllis, Bobby, what would you say if I were... If, if what? If I were to tell you a big secret, that you're in love? Worse. Engaged. Oh, Celia! What? Oh, Bobby! Bobby! <laughs> oh, Father! Father! Aunt Ida! Phyllis! Aunt Ida! Father! Father. Father. Celia's engaged! Phyllis! Father! Even! Aunt Ida! Celia's going to be married! Yes. Stop! Stop. 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 Uh, then you've told her. Uh, it's all arranged for me. Oh, no, not you, silly. <laughs> but, Phyllis, who is it then? I don't know. I forgot to ask. Oh, don't you know? Come on, Bobby. Please, you're dear. Oh, Bobby, you know what you're doing. Celia. Oh, good work, dear. Congratulations. Oh, we can get married now. Oh, Father, we can get married now, can't we? Oh, yes, 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 of course, of course. Well, bless my soul and body, Celia engaged. <laughs> yes, Father. That is, if you've no objections to the prospect of my leaving you. Uh, objections? My dear girl, I'm delighted, delighted. <laughs> yes, Father. I thought you'd be pleased. Uh, pleased? Well, I hope I express a father's feelings when his elder daughter proposes to leave the home nest. <laughs> Uh, uh, now, my dear girl, uh, who is he? What is the dear fellow's name? Oh, Celia, tell us all about him. Who is he? I do hope he's an army man like Algy. Uh, he is in the army. What's his rank? Hmm? His rank? Oh, uh, he's a... He's a colonel, dear. <laughs> a colonel. Uh, oh, oh uh, a colonel. And, hmm. and what is the dear fellow's name? Smith. John Smith. Smith. John Smith. How depressing. How coincidental. I once knew a chap named Smith at Oxford. Oh. Yeah, with good old John Smith. Come, my darling. Oh, come back to your... Come It's too bad, old boy. But I tried my best. Sit down, you know all about it. Yeah, now, yeah, now, yeah, now yeah. do sit down and tell us all about it, will you? Oh. I can't wait to hear about it. Now, my dear, I suppose that you'll be getting married soon. Oh, yes, Father. After the fighting. Yeah, fighting? The fighting? Uh, yes. You see, he sailed this morning for Arabia, uh, in Mesopotamia. There's trouble there. Oh, yes. But tell us more about the Colonel. Well, you see... We were guests at the same house party all the week. And this morning, I was in the garden alone, and he joined me there. It was then... And what did he say? Oh, he told me that he loved me and couldn't live without me. You know the sort of Tommy Rot that Bobby tells you, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And are you happy? <laughs> it is going to make a great difference in my life. Yeah, well, I, I, I hope so, my dear. I hope so. <laughs> Well, now, let's get back and finish the rubber. <laughs> yeah, rally! Uh, rally! Oh, Celia, the Indian mail goes out tonight via Port Said. Well? Port Said, that's where the letters for Arabia will be transferred. Oh, yes. You must write him at once and tell him how grateful we... I, I mean, uh, how we... how we love him. <laughs> Yes, yes. You must try just yes, one thing. Come on. 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 Come Come along. Come along, dear. Ophelia, what do you call him? I don't know. You don't know? Oh, I mean, uh, you see, I, uh, I use a pet name. Oh, lovely. 
What is it? Oh, you know, Phyllis, it's, it's really absurd. I, um, I call him, uh, Wobbles. Wobbles? <laughs> yes, everybody calls him Wobbles. Oh, Cedar, it's delicious. Fancy you're being married to a man called Wobbles. My darling Wobbles. Yeah. <laughs> My darling Wobbles. I hardly know how to write you, Wobbles. It all seems too hauntingly beautiful to be true, Wobbles. I see your face everywhere, Wobbles. The very tulips have a look of you, Wobbles. Darling Wobbles, please don't get wounded in the war. This is my first love letter, Wobbles. But even I know how it should end. Crosses, wobbles, 8,000 wobbles to be taken as required. Forever. Finished, dear? Are you through? Take it for you, dear. No, thanks, Evelyn. I'll see to it. Celia! Come here. We need a four. Oh, Aunt Heidi, you go in. Oh, one more rubber will be the death of me. Oh, you played great so oh, well. I you say, go in. Dear. Now, you know, Aunt Father would oh, much oh, rather play with you. Dear. I know you do oh. that good for you, oh. darling. It's time for the letters, Your Ladyship. Oh, here's mine, Martin. Miss Celia has one to go also. Colonel John Smith, Field Force, BEF, Arabia. Thank you, my lady. Dear old Wobble. I wonder who he is. Well, let's look in the army list. You're so bright, dear. <laughs> Smith, 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 J.V. Smith, M.C., D.S.O., K.C.B. and O.B.E. Mm, I suppose that's the man. Must be. Good night, Celia. Good night, Celia. Good night, Phyllis. Good night, Evelyn. I know. I won't play anymore. I finished. Oh, all right, all right. Dear old Wobbles. Is there... Is there anything peculiar about Colonel Smith? What would you call peculiar, Aunt Ida? Anything about Colonel Smith you don't want the family to know? 
Yes. There is something about Colonel Smith I don't want the family to know. And Ida, will you promise you won't breathe a word of what I'm going to tell you? Oh, oh, I don't know. I... Very well. If you don't want to know. Oh, I promise. Very well. There isn't any Colonel Smith. What? There isn't any Colonel Smith? No. I invented him. Great Scott. Celia, your engagement. Well, naturally, I invented that, too. So that Father would let Phyllis marry Bobby. Oh, but how on earth are you going to keep them from finding it out? First of all, a regiment did sail this morning for Arabia. But regiment sailed back. Ah, wobbles won't. Celia, your letter. That's all right, dear. I burned that. Oh, and here goes the ambulance oh. before they have a chance to look at my colonel. Oh, oh, no, oh. Oh, Celia, what will your father say? I don't care what father says. Never, never again will I be content to be what I've been all these years. Good old Celia. <laughs> nice old thing. Celia who doesn't want things. Celia who looks after things. Celia who doesn't mind things. And Celia who attends to things. Well, Celia who attends to things is dead. Now, everything attends to Celia. You're being frightfully unmoral. When the day begins and Father shouts, God bless my soul, what's the matter with this coffee? Tastes like nothing on earth. I'll be upstairs in my bed drinking chocolate. And when evening comes and Martin says, Big pardon, miss, the whiskey is out. I'll say, I don't care. Colonel Smith doesn't drink. <laughs> I'll be younger than the youngest of them, gayer than the gayest. And what do I care now what they do or say or even think about me? I'll wear just as many green stockings as they please, at as many weddings as they wish. And I'll laugh and I'll sing and I'll dance them into holes. Because why? Well, I'll have a sweetheart of my own. Don't you see? I'll be the lady love of Wobbles. <laughs> Hello, Johnny. Good morning, sir. Oh, excuse me, sir. Uh, did you, uh, did you by any chance know a family by the name of Faraday? 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 Oh, yes, of course. As a matter of fact, William Faraday was at Eton with me. <laughs> ages and ages ago, my boy. Indeed. Fine chap. Excellent family and all that. I believe he married Harriet Elton. Uh, did this, um, did this William Faraday have any, have any daughter, sir? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. I believe he has three. <laughs> the entire family seems to run to daughters. If I remember rightly, the middle girl married rather well. The oldest and youngest are still on his hands. Not thinking of marrying either or both of them, are you, Johnny? Oh, good gracious, no, sir. I, um, I just wanted a little information. Oh.
Riesje regens, please. Now, Bobby, that's your third. Remember, you promised well, me... Well, before we were married, you were always forcing them on there. Needles and pins, needles and pins. When you get married, your troubles begin. <laughs> <laughs> Rather good, eh, Bob? <laughs> Father, may I have a piece of the paper, please? Thank you. There you are. I suppose you want the sporting section. Thank you, sir. There you are. Oh, uh, ca ca can you read? Eton and uh, uh, Oxford. Uh-huh. There's the children's section. Great Scott, there is absolutely nothing in this paper. Phyllis, Elsie Hardman has been married. No. Yes. Rather lucky, eh? Isn't there any other news, Evelyn? No, dear. Nobody born? Or dead? No. Absolutely nothing. Oh! Evelyn, what is it? Why, Scott, what's the matter? Bless my soul and body, what's the matter? What is it? Uh, really, Evelyn, you often to startle people like that. It's selfish. Father, the death, the death. Death? Poor Celia. Read, read. Died of wounds at Baghdad on October the 11th. Colonel Smith. She that's tough. My soul and body. Well, I say, you know, that's too bad. Uh, making the old girl a widow before she's a wife. Really, old boy, at a time like this, do you think you should make such frightful jokes? Oh, oh but I wasn't joking, old boy. Oh, but father, who, who is to break the news to her? My husband will, Bobby. Be? Oh, no, no. No, it uh, needs a woman's voice, a woman's gentle fingers. I think we should leave father to tell her. I? Oh, dear, no, no, no. I, I, I would break down. Better uh, someone outside of the family. They could retain their composure better. Yet, yet really, for instance. Oh, I've got a topping idea. Let's all break it gently to Celia when she comes into the room. I'll give the signal. One, two, three. And then we'll all say together, very gently, Colonel Smith is dead. Oh, oh, oh I really. Said. Hadn't you better let me do it? Uh, yes, you, you are the very person. Of course. Shh, shh. Hmm? She's coming. Now, we must all be very calm. And uh, natural. And act just as though nothing had happened. Oh, the times! Oh, boy! Good evening, everybody. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, see ya. Yeah. Uh, allow me. Thank you, Father. Let me take those, Celia. Thanks, Bobby. Have a cocktail, Celia. Thanks, Evelyn. Cheerio, Raleigh, old top. Cheerio, Celia, dear. But it's difficult just at this time. You're all so very kind to me. No, oh, no, 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 no,
Uh, any news in the Times? Yes. The Times? I, uh, I had a thing with Tom. Well, Mark, with the Times. Uh, no, no, nothing of importance. Uh, was there rally? No, nothing very interesting. Things seem quite dead. Yes. Uh, now, where could Mark have put that well, tie? Oh, I don't know. I think it was here someplace. I swear it was here. I swear. I, I, I was right there. I, I... Why, there it is, isn't it? <laughs> uh, bless my soul and body. Uh, so it is. <laughs> uh, May I see it if everyone's quite finished? Oh, yes, uh, rather. Yes, yes, my dear. Thank you. Births, marriages, and deaths. You know, I always like to see that column first. Great. How amusing. Amusing. Yeah. 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 On October the 11th. Oh, the 11th. Elsie Hardman to Alfred Bright. Why didn't someone tell me Elsie Hardman was married? Uh, I wouldn't pursue that line of inquiry any further if I were you, my darling. Oh, oh, Father, I just want to see if anyone is dead. Oh, Oh! Oh, 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 my dear, oh, my dear. Oh, hush, hush, hush. So, you're all trying to keep this from me? Oh, go. Don't you think you'd better leave her alone with me? Uh, yes, yes, Ida. Uh, come, children, come. Wait, Father. I don't intend to let this news make any difference to me outwardly. I can't expect you to realize all that I have lost. I'll go to the dinner party tonight and try and act as though nothing whatever had happened. That's splendid of you, old Peach. Um, uh, Celia, it's ripping of you not to give way to sorrow. Rally. Oh, Father, don't you think we ought to get our rest? Yes, yes, yes. Come on, come on. Oh, Aunt Ida, didn't we come through splendidly? Yes. Oh! <laughs> Thank goodness that's over with. Oh. Come in. Uh, Celia, dear, uh, keep up your heart. Remember, there are other fish in the sea. Big fish. Poor fish. <laughs> upstairs with me while I fix myself up a bit. All right, darling. Oh. <laughs> yes, sir? Um, I'm looking for a Miss Celia Faraday, a fiancé of Colonel John Smith. Oh, yes, sir. I say, old fellow, isn't it dreadful? Mm, uh, what? A poor old Smith's sudden death. Oh, uh, uh, you mean, uh, Colonel John Smith? Naturally. Hadn't you heard? Uh, uh, yes, uh, oh yes, yes, of course. Um, uh, that's why I'm here. Uh, my name is, um, um, Colonel Vaughan. Uh, hi. I'm Rally, Rally. Oh, really, really. Oh, there's a gentleman in uniform to see Miss Celia. Oh, I understand, Martin. I'll talk to him. Oh, very well, Miss. Well, we certainly came through with flying colors. Yes, we were frightfully lucky. The family didn't suspect a thing. Poor old Wobbles. Served his purpose to a T. Phyllis is married, and everybody's happy. I can't imagine how I was clever enough to invent him. Now, you can be a flirting widow. <laughs> oh, let me take your hat. Thank you. 
I want to ask you to be very gentle in delivering your message to Celia. She was very happy. It was a terrible blow. She loved and was loved. Uh, uh, yes, yes, of course. And then, mm. in a second, came fate. With its cruel shears. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, of course, I... I quite understand. Uh, please go on. She bore the blow with remarkable courage. Oh, tell me. Uh, tell me, where did the lovers meet? Uh, when, when did they become engaged? In fact, I mean, well, uh, how did it all happen? Oh, didn't the Colonel tell you? Oh, no. Oh, dear me, no. No, Smith was one of those big, unselfish men who never talk about themselves. She adored him. Uh, yes. Well, you see, we were just talking about Celia having to wear another pair of green stockings at my wedding when she told us of her engagement. So you are engaged? More than engaged. Married. Oh. And then comes Evelyn. And she's married too? Oh, much more than married. She's Lady Trenchard. Uh, so uh, Miss Celia is the oldest of you all? Yes, she's quite old. And we thought she'd never get married. Hmm. And you see, Father couldn't let me get married until Celia was off his hands. And now the poor old thing. <clears throat> Romance uh, came to her, as it were, rather late in life. Hmm. I see it all now. She wrote him that very night. Yes, yes, he, he received the letter. It puzzled him and, and interested him very much. Oh, yes, he, he used to sit and study it by the hour. I, uh, I have it with me now. How truly beautiful. Oh, you must tell Celia that. You see, she met him at Southampton, and he sailed before we could meet him. Oh, oh, th then there was never any possible chance of his making your acquaintances? No, but I've heard so much about him from Celia. I can almost believe I see him. <clears throat> uh, yes. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Uh, yes, quite so. Uh, I say, I think I'd better go and get the car. You've brought, I hope, one or two little mementos from him. I, I beg your pardon? Little things that Celia can treasure. Oh, uh, uh, yes, uh, yes, I have a few things, uh, uh, trifles that Smith habitually wore. Just what she will value most. Now, if you'll wait in the library, I'll tell Celia you're here. Oh, yes. Now, just make yourself at home. Celia will be down in a minute. Thank you. Oh, come on now. Oh, Celia, there's a Colonel Vaughan waiting downstairs to see you. Vaughan? Mm -hmm. I don't know anyone of that name. You'd better run down and see him. All right. I, uh, I felt it my duty to come and see you as soon as I heard of uh, Colonel Smith's death. Colonel Smith's death? Uh, yes. Yes, his, his death. Why, uh, you'll forgive me, I'm sure, Colonel Vaughan. But you see, the news of my loss is so sudden that I'd, well, I'd rather not talk about it to strangers. 
Oh, no, 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 please. Please, don't go. I bring you Colonel Smith's last message. Colonel Smith? But there wasn't any... I... I oh, you, you see, I'm... I'm just a little overwhelmed. Yes. Yes, I was afraid that you would be. You, uh... knew him? Oh, yes. Yes, and I can appreciate, uh, possibly better than anyone else, how great must be your grief. Yeah. He, uh... He lay in my arms and gazed with fading eyes homeward. He smiled as he thought of you. And when the last moment came, he told me to carry on. Oh, it's extremely kind of you to come all this way from London to tell me this. But you see, uh, with I... His, uh, with his last breath, he gave me a few little things uh, to bring to you. Uh, memento. Little, little trifles that he always wore. Heavens, no, I... Oh, I couldn't think of taking them. But he... Oh, oh I couldn't. Oh, I couldn't. He bids you wear this, always, on your bosom. For Smith's sake, whom we both love. Oh. oh. I beg your pardon. I am thanking you in my dead comrade's name. Uh, uh, with this uh, a signet ring, uh, Smith used to seal his letters. Yes, he was, uh, oh, he was very, very fond of it. I trust you will treasure it, always. Uh, please. I have several other things that belong to Smith. His, uh, his cigarette case I brought along, and also his, his latch keys. Yes, curiously enough, I, I, I have his, his latch keys, and also the pen oh, no, I... no, 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 I, I don't want them. Oh, but please, my, oh, my, my dear Miss Faraday, I... Celia, oh, I'm... I'm awfully sorry. Well, that's quite all right, Bobby. We've finished our business. Oh, uh, Colonel Vaughan. This is my brother-in-law, Mr. Robert Tarver. All right, how do you do? Look, old girl, I'm awfully sorry, but we ought to be getting along. That dinner party's at eight, you know. A dinner party? Yes. We're going to a concert afterwards. It's a classical concert. So, you're going out to enjoy yourself. All right. I think I'd better be going. No, on the very evening of the day that brings you the tragic news of Smith's death, you... Colonel Vaughan. And your dress. Your dress, I've just noticed it. Why, it, it, it isn't even black. I told you it was a classical concert. Yes, I think you'd better give me back that watch and chain. Very well. Here it is. And there's a few things I'd like to tell you about Colonel Smith. Ah, Celia. Uh, oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, Father, this is Colonel Vaughan. Oh. Now, how do you do, sir? How do you do? I'm uh, just back from Arabia. Yeah. Oh. Oh, then you knew... Uh, uh, yes, yes, of course I... He was my, uh, my dearest friend. Yes. Yeah. Poor fellow. Poor fellow. Father, I think we'd better be getting along. Oh, uh, uh, Colonel Vaughan, my daughter Evelyn. How do you do? Uh, my daughter Phyllis. Uh, my son-in-law. We have it. Uh, uh, too bad you can't stop and have dinner with us. Oh, uh, Colonel Vaughan must return to London tonight. There's an excellent train leaving at 8.30. Oh. Excellent. Stops at every station, has two hours wait in Bletchley, and arrives in London at 3.30 in the morning. Well, well, well. <laughs> oh, look here. The express leaves at ten. Ah, splendid. Uh, then you can stop and have dinner here first. Uh, 
Uh, Celia will remain and look after you. Oh, thank you, sir. I should like to very much. You see, I feel that there is a great deal more that Miss Celia should know about the uh, tragic death of her fiancé. Yes, yes, sir. Hey, uh, uh, Celia. Very well. I shall speak to Martin about dinner. Oh, uh, Ida. Uh, this is Colonel Vaughan. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, my sister-in-law, Mrs. Chisholm Faraday, who has been a mother to our dear Celia during this tragedy. Uh, Colonel Vaughan has just returned from Arabia. Why did he do that? Yeah, my dear Ida, I'm afraid you don't understand. Colonel Vaughan brings us news of our gallant, lost Smith. Uh, Smith? Yes. Uh, Colonel Smith? Yes. Yes, Aunt Ida. Celia's Colonel Smith. He knew him very well. They were comrades. You knew the Colonel? Yes, he was my dearest friend. I, uh, I bring Miss Celia a few valued trinkets and his last dying message. D -d -d trinkets? <laughs> Slap her hands hard. That always does them good. Yes, yes. Oh, it does nothing of the kind. Ah, there, there. You see, I, I told you so. Oh, this must be broken to Celia. Oh, Celia already knows, dear. Yes, she and Colonel Vaughan are staying home to dine together. Dine together? And discuss Smith? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, my poor dear heartbroken girl. Come, come, children. We, 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 we're getting along. Come along, come along. Yeah, come, Ida. This has been rather too much for you, but you'll be much better when you get out into the air. Yes, come. Yeah, come, come. Yeah, all right, all right. All right. Yeah, Dinner's quite ready, Miss Celia. Thank you, Martin. Eight o'clock. And your train doesn't leave until ten. No. We have two whole hours in which to talk of dear old Smith. Heaven rest his soul. Aren't they ever going to be ready for their coffee, Mr. Martin? I've never seen so much talking and so little eating in this house. Upon the square, the machine guns at the corners. One here at the tip of the nutcracker, another here at the cheese. Only two. Oh, yes, we should have liked more, of course. Uh, and we should have been all right anyway, if this fellow here hadn't jammed. Oh, what happened then? They are charged. They split our ranks in a second and were in the square, stabbing at our backs. Oh, but where were you? I was... Uh, wait a minute. I was here. There, the peach? Yes, that's me, the peach. We faced about and stabbing madly, wildly, everywhere. Here or there, we drove them out. Oh, go on. What next? It was a messy business. Uh, you see, once inside the square, we could only use the bayonet. Well, we were two days marching from water. So, you see, it became necessary that as night came on, someone had to get through and bring relief. I know what happened. I know. You volunteered. Well, between you and me, it was a good deal safer outside the square. Oh. You see, 
I wasn't in command, so I could volunteer. And get the Distinguished Service Order. And a drink of water a day before the others. You'll be a general, won't you? No, no, just a brigadier. Oh, it's wonderful to hear of such marvelous deeds from a man who has done them. If you only knew how much all this me means to a man who has been roughing it, campaigning, fighting in the desert. You have a home? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, an old abbey that looks rather like Trafalgar Square on a wet day, but not nearly as cheerful. Oh, you mustn't let yourself get lonely. No. No, that's just what I'm beginning to think. Oh. But you haven't told me of Colonel Smith's death. Uh, uh, Colonel Smith's uh, uh, de uh, death. Oh, his death, yes. Yes, he was magnificent, simply magnificent. He was, um, uh, 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 he was everywhere, everywhere. His voice rang out loud and clear. Up and at them, boys, they shall not pass. Suddenly, I heard the sickening thud of a bullet and a gasp. Uh. It was Smith. Again, his voice rang out. Don't, don't give up the fight, boys. Carry on. Carry on. I, I rushed to him. The mask of death was on his face. I gathered him in my arms. Oh, Smith. Smith, I cried. Dear old friend. He looked up at me and smiled. Oh, Celia. Celia. He whispered, go to her, Jimmy. Take my place. Tell her to, to carry on. Oh, uh, well, we're serving the coffee in the library, miss. Oh, uh, very well, Martin. Yes, miss. Much nicer, isn't it? Tell me, did you love each other very much? I don't know about Colonel Smith, but I thought a lot about him. In fact, I wrote him letters every day. You, you, you wrote him letters every, every... Then, by Joe, where are those letters? You can't let things like that go astray. Letters from you lying loose about a camp. Why should you imagine that my letters never reached him? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, well, you see, Well, I, I, I was with him when he received the first one, and I can assure you he never received any more. You... You, you mean that a Colonel Smith received my let... No, I... Why, no, he wouldn't dare show my letters. Show them? Oh, my, my dear Miss Faraday. You, you'll never know how much that letter means to... Uh, 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 <laughs> to, uh, uh, did uh, me meant to, uh, <laughs> uh, dear old Smith, <laughs> yes. Uh, look here, I have an idea. Don't let's talk about Smith anymore. Let's talk about something else. Oh, do, let's. Well, what should we talk about? You. You know, you've hardly said a word about yourself. And naturally, I'm uh, interested. Well, I was born... Uh, guess when? Twenty-five years ago. <laughs> thank you. Will you have a cigarette? Oh, no, no, thank you. Really not.
Do you think he would have approved of this? Oh, surely you're not afraid now of wobbles? Wobbles? Did you say wobbles? Well, surely you knew his nickname. But I, I always called him Wobbles. All the army called him Wobbles. Oh, I didn't know that. Aren't you forgetting yourself, Colonel Vaughan? Or are you just forgetting Wobbles? Oh, damn Wobbles. Well, well, well. So delighted that you have decided to stay over. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Good night, Colonel Vaughan. Oh. It's so nice that you're staying. Thank you, Lady Trenchard. Good night, Celia. Good night, Evelyn. Oh, Colonel Vaughan. I'm so glad you decided not to go back to town tonight. I'll see you in the morning. Uh, good night, Mrs. Darby. Good night. So glad to hear you're not going. Good night, Thank you. Good night. Come on, Bobby. We have tennis early in the morning, you know. All good right. night, Celia. Good night. I thought Colonel Vaughan's train left at 10. Oh, uh, did it? Yes. Uh, I make it 10.30. Uh, what does your watch say, Colonel? A uh, time I have, uh... Uh, yes. Of course. I left my watch in town to be mended. It ran too fast. Yes, you, uh, <clears throat> it did. And I suppose you took advantage of this period of mourning to have all your jewelry attended to. Miss Faraday, please. Allow me to lend you this watch, which you so kindly brought from poor Colonel Smith. Otherwise, I'm afraid you're going to be an awfully long time without your own. And be very, very careful when you place this on your little finger, will you? And goodbye. Raleigh, there's a midnight train to town, isn't there? Oh, yes, yes. I'm sure Mr. Raleigh will be most happy to drop you off at the station on his way home. Delighted. So sorry to hurry you away. And there's nothing else to say but goodbye. Haven't you said it all? Well, Raleigh, since you're kind enough to offer me a lift, I... Goodbye, Miss Faraday. Goodbye. 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 Hey, good night. Good night. See you in the morning, old girl. Yes, do, yes. And I as much as told him he ought to marry. Celia Faraday, you proposed? No. No. But what an awful fool I've been. Celia Faraday, that man had your letter in his pocket. He told Phyllis he had your letter. Colonel Vaughan is not Colonel Vaughan. No. He's Colonel Smith. Yes. He's wobbled, and he's gone. I'll never see him again. And that's the one thing which will save us. Yes. Oh, I can, I can never face him again. Anyway, let's forget all about it and go to bed. Come, dear. I, I, I'm so fortunate to have caught you. Uh, that's a wretched train. You'll be much more comfortable here for the night. Thank you, sir. Your father has very kindly asked me to stay the night and take the train in the morning. Oh, uh, charmed, I'm sure. And uh, if you'll pardon me, I'll see about the guest room. Good night, father. Good night, William. Uh, good night, Celia. Good night, Ida. 
Thank you, sir. Your daughter is really a very beautiful woman. I must say I'm beginning to envy Colonel Smith his slight acquaintance with her. Yes, my dear chap. I don't know what I would have done all these years had it not been for my dear... We've got to get out of this house tonight, and I've got a great idea. What? We'll take the midnight train to London. What? Hello. Hello, hello. Are you there? But I have nothing to wear. We haven't time to wear anything. We'll have to go without any clothes. What? Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, put me through to the station. Please. Don't worry, dear. I'll bundle you up warmly. <sighs> but I should have something to eat. I feel faint. Take a drink of the brandy. It's in there. Oh, hello. Hello, is that the station? I uh, do feel very oh, faint. Yes, uh, just a minute, please. Yes, Aunt Ida. Oh. Oh. Here, dear, drink this. Oh, no. Now, please don't be ridiculous at oh. a time like this. Well. Now, sit down there. Very well. Hello, uh, Miss Celia Faraday speaking. I've got to get away on the midnight train tonight. Will you reserve a compartment to London for me? Please hurry. Thanks. How do you feel now? A little better. Splendid. And so we got home again without a single casualty. Wait, th th that really is most exciting. It, it must have been tremendously interesting to you. Yes, it's nice to talk about now that it's all over. Hello, hello. Uh, give me Sir Raleigh Raleigh's house, please. I want to speak to Sir Raleigh Raleigh, please. Hello. Hello, Raleigh. Oh, uh, Aunt Ida, uh, this is Celia Faraday speaking. Aunt Ida just received a wire from London with some very bad news. Liar. Shh. Uh, would you come over and drive us to the station in your motor? Thanks awfully. Oh, listen, don't drive to the door, will you? No. Listen, just stay down by the gate and... Shh. Shh. And Sh when you get there, just blow your horn very, very gently. Yes, yes, oh, thanks, Raleigh. Aunt Ida. I believe you have a love with this. Well, Smith. I hope I'm not such a fool as that. And besides, even if I were, it's all the more reason why I should get out of this house tonight before I make a fool of myself. Come on, dear, let's get our things on. What well, things? Where are we going? Well, and Ida, please hurry. Come on. <laughs> Do you feel all right, dear? Top hole! Oh, cabbage! Uh oh. <laughs> oh, pardon me, sir. Hey, look here. Why would you like a nightcap? A nip of my extra special 1812 brandy. What do you say, huh? Well, that sounds pretty good, sir. <laughs> Come along. Come along. No, I've no intention whatever of staying in the army, sir. Barrack life is pretty dull. Active service is really the only, only thing we look forward to. Uh, I, I imagine so. I imagine so. What a charming room. Yes, isn't it? Isn't it? Delightful. Well, Bed? Uh... Yes, pardon. Oh. Hello, Faraday Hall. Mr. Faraday speaking. Yes, tell Miss Faraday what? that you made reservations on the midnight train, changing cars at Cobden? Miss Faraday's leaving, uh, where? Uh, no, no, nothing of the sort. Yeah, what's that? Uh, you say that Miss Celia telephoned and said she was going herself? Yeah, nonsense, my man, nonsense. Now, now, don't argue with me, please. Yeah, I, I fear that you have been tricking. Yeah, you know, this telephone reeks of brandy. Yeah, try and be sober in the morning, my good man. Yeah, too bad. He's a good fellow, very obliging. Well, well, cheerio, sir. Thank you. <coughs> very good indeed. Ah, Thank you. Uh, shall we turn in? Yes, I'm quite tired. This is your room, Colonel Vaughan. Oh, thank you, sir. Anything you want during the night, just ring for market. Breakfast at nine sharp. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night. Good night, sir. Oh, I'm 
I beg your pardon. Why, uh, what? Uh, you... You said there was nothing else to say but goodbye. Well, there is something else to say, and I... I'd, I'd much rather say it than write it. Whatever you do, don't write. I hate letters intensely. Won't... Won't you sit down for five minutes? Certainly not. Four minutes? No. You afraid of me? No. Look here, I, I had no right to come here as I did. I didn't think it was very funny. No, it, it, it wasn't meant to be funny, I assure you. I, I, I was, I was curious. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, 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 uh. I, I want you to know that my name is really Vaughan. You astonish me. Is it anything else, too? Yes, it, it's really Smith, too. Vaughan Smith. But, of course, in the army, they only call me Smith. What a delightful combination of class and math. Now, as long as you insist upon saying goodbye to me, will you do it as quickly as possible and let me go? No, no, not until we've decided uh, what's to be done about your other letters. Uh, what other letters? Well, I... I have the first one here. But, but your other letters, oh, good heavens, to think of them, your love letters wandering loose all over Arabia. Don't worry. Those letters which I wrote to an imaginary hero are all here. And now they're going into the fire. No, no, no. No, uh, won't you give them to me instead? Please. No. Don't touch them. Well, you will let me help you, won't you? Yes. Keep your eyes on me. Easily. Gladly. You'd better close your eyes. Close them tight. Oh, I... I only want you to give me the same chance as the others. Oh, the others haven't a ch Dearest Wobbles, I have dreamed of you for months, and... A gentleman wouldn't disobey a lady's request. Oh, read it, please. No. To yourself, and let me watch. Mm -mm. 
I'm a bit of a mind reader, you know. I have dreamed of you all my life. And now I see you, my ideal. Oh, this is absurd. Was I right? Certainly not. Oh, don't, Colonel Vaughan. Uh, Smith. Wobble. Wobble. I say, uh, uh, oh dear, uh, I'm almost frozen. All right, Raleigh. I'll be with you in a minute. Oh, but you know, uh, uh, old man, uh, it's Celia I've been waiting 20 minutes for. Oh, yes, quite so. But I've been waiting for Celia for 20 years. Oh. 